happy Movember, my friends. And nothing celebrates Movember like awesome mustaches and fake leather. In this topic, we're talking about something a little bit difficult, gravitational potentials. Uh, not just simply energy in a constant field. We're talking gravitational potential energy in a changing field and also potential, which is different than energy. Get ready. We'll start with gravitational potential energy. I think it's the slightly easier one to understand. Now, the definition we want to get written down first, and that is simply this, based on how much energy you're storing in a field. Now, it makes sense that if I store something here, I'm going to get so much energy back. If I store it higher in the field, then it has more energy. The equation that you might be used to is this one here, where m is mass, g is 9.8, and h is how high it is. But this is not all of the story. So we're going to say that this is not right, because this assumes that the field strength is constant, which you know, hopefully, as you get higher up, then g gets slightly less. Astronauts in the space station don't have an acceleration of 9.8. It's maybe 9.1 or something. So our new equation I'm going to put right here is that the energy due to gravity is going to be negative g, mass of the planet, mass of the object, divided by the distance away from the center of the planet. Now here is the kind of freaky part about that. If we draw our graph here, where x-axis is the radius, or the distance from the center, and the y-axis is our negative energy, we get a shape like this. And the crazy thing is that this energy, this GPE, is always negative. Now, the reason that is, is that if something is infinitely far away here, let's say, here's our, uh, on the distance away from the planet, then the gravitational field strength goes to zero when you're infinitely far away. And so that's going to have a gra gravitational potential energy of zero. Now we're going to have to say that that's the highest that it can be because that's very far above the planet. Something could fall from infinitely far to Earth and destroy us all with infinite energy. Uh, well, it wouldn't be infinite. But as you get closer to the planet, we're going to say that the energy gets more and more negative. And so what you... Uh, have to also know is that if something is infinitely far from a planet, it is going to have a GPE of zero. If you fill in zero or infinite infinity for this bottom number, your gravitational potential energy is zero. And you also want to know that like all energy, this is a scalar, and also like all energy, the units are joules. And also, much like the GPE that you know of, depends on the mass. Small objects will have one GPE. More massive objects will have more energy because as they fall they can generate more kinetic energy. Gravitational potential is an equally tricky term because of the negativity issues. But let's start with the definition. Write this down please. That it is not just energy. It is, as said here, the work per unit mass done to move something from infinitely far away into the position that it is at. Now, the equation for this, we usually use a capital V, not only for electrical potential, but also for gravitational potential, it is negative big G, mass of your planet, divided by the distance away from the center of the planet. Now, this will be similar or related to what you know as your gravitational energy, and that is that you could think of it as maybe GPE just divided by the mass of your object. Now the graph if is similar to energy. This is our radius. This is our gravitational potential. This is all negative down here. Same shape. It's going to asymptote uh, up here. As R approaches infinity, the gravitational potential goes to zero. Because if something's infinitely far away, Gravitational field strength is zero, and so we have to say that it has a zero as the most gravitational potential it can have. As it gets closer, it just becomes more and more negative. Let's just summarize some of those facts, and that is that gravitational potential is always negative. It can approach zero, but can't get there. 
like gravitational potential energy, it is also a scalar. But what's different is that the units are not joules. They are joules per kilogram, or energy per unit mass. And because of that, you can say that it does not depend on the mass of the object. For example, you've got the International Space Station, and maybe you've got the Russian Soyuz capsule, and it's going to dock with it. So it's at the same altitude above the Earth. Clearly the space station has way more mass than the space capsule, but they have the same gravitational potential because they're at the same altitude, although they have very different gravitational potential energies. Then, another fact is that if something's infinitely far away, its gravitational potential is a big goose egg. Let's try a mathematical problem here. Start with part A and pause it, rather your equations, try and solve it. Now hopefully, you knew that since we're dealing with gravitational potential and not energy, that you're going to start with your equation V is equal to this. And then hopefully, you're also able to realize that your radius is the Earth's radius plus the altitude here. And that turns out to be about 6.9 times 10 to the 6 meters, after you add up this value to this value converted to meters. Once you plug in your values, one of them being that incredibly small constant for big G, you are still going to get a large value of about 5.8 times 10 to the 7th. Now remember the units, because this should be an energy per unit mass, has to be joules per kilogram as your answer. Now, let's work on part B. This, is, this part B is a little bit trickier than you think because we don't need to raise it from the center of the Earth up to this point. We just need to go from the surface up to that new altitude. So what you actually need to know first is what is the change in gravitational potential from this initial radius, which is the surface, up to this final one. We already know the final potential. So let's solve for the initial, which is going to be still our same negative gm over our initial. Now I went ahead and hopefully you paused it, and I went ahead and plugged in the numbers for the initial potential at the surface of the Earth, and I ended up with a larger negative number, because it's closer to, this, to the Earth, of 6.4 times 10 to the 7th joules per kilogram. And you then needed to take the change in potential of final minus initial, and you end up with a negative 5.8 minus a negative 6.4, I'm leaving out my exponents, and you're going to be left with a change of a positive, because it is getting more positive as it goes up, 0 0.6 times 10 to the 7th joules per kilogram. That is the change in potential as you raise up the Hubble Space Telescope. That's only part of it. More to come. Pause again and see if you know where to go from here. You are looking for the increase in GPE, which is equal to your increase in potential times the mass of the Hubble Space Telescope. So you just fill in your change in potential point, oops, 0.6 times 10 to the 7th times your 11,000 kilogram mass of the telescope, and you end up with a value of about 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 10th joules, which is a whole lot of joules because it's not easy to put satellites up in orbit. And that's only to get it up there hovering. Later we'll get to how much energy it takes to also keep it in orbit, which is fast and a lot more joules.